Hey guys, welcome back to another Tutorial Tuesday. Today, I'm going to show you guys how you can make a blended audio spectrum in Adobe After Effects. Let's get started. Alright guys, so real quick before the video starts, I just want to say sorry I wasn't able to upload last week. My computer completely bit the dust and I was unable to really edit any of, the, any of the footage I had for the week's tutorial, so it's going up a week late. I know uploads have been kind of slow lately, there's just been a lot of things going on, but I plan to keep a good track record in the future. So anyways, enough bibble babble, let's get into the tutorial. So if many of you guys know, on my T God Designs channel I do a whole bunch of intros and stuff like that, uh, and one of the signature sort of looks that I employ in a lot of my uh, video intros is a blended audio spectrum that goes above or below and it blends into kind of a background or like a, a band. Kind of like what you're seeing on screen now. So I've gotten so many comments on actually how to do this effect, I decided I'd finally do it. I know it's kind of a signature kind of look for me, but I guess I'm okay giving it away just so you guys know all these cool effects. Pretty much all it entails is just making the audio spectrum so solid that it looks like a solid moving bar and then you use track mats to be able to combine it into the look of the band that you have in the middle or whatever you're blending it into. It may sound complicated at first but it's actually really really easy. Let's go ahead and jump into After Effects to show you just exactly how this effect is pulled off. Alright guys, so here we are in Adobe After Effects. I'm going to be using Adobe After Effects CC 2014 a version for this tutorial. Of course, you can use previous versions of Adobe After Effects. That is just the one I'm using, so if you're having any problems, that is what you can look for. Anyways, let's go ahead and start off this tutorial by creating a new composition like we always do. I'm going to create a new one. I'm going to call it Main Comp because I always call my main composition main comp because that is just the way I've learned it, that's the way I've taught it, and that's the way I've always done it. Kind of gotten great in my brain early on. But anyways, we're going to make it 1920 by 1080, that's HD. Uh, you can also go 1280 by 720 if you so please, but that's personal preference. Uh, frame rate is 60 now that YouTube supports it, and 20 seconds should be enough for this tutorial. Of course, change that to whatever you need for your project. Anyways, let's go ahead and click OK so we can create our new composition. And many of you guys were confused about how I was able to see transparency um, in my previous tutorials. Uh, you can actually click this button right here and it will toggle the visibility of the transparency. Keep in mind, no matter whether it's on or off, the transparency is there. You just can't see it. So anyways, I'm going to go ahead and show it because I like to see exactly what's going on and I don't like After Effects to kind of mask anything from my vision. I like to know exactly what's transparent in what's transparent, what's uh, black, what's black, what's white, what's gray, what's blue, uh, you know what I mean. I like to see exactly what's going on. Anyways, let's go ahead and start off this tutorial by dragging in some music um, that we're going to use for this tutorial because we have audio spectrums going on. We need the audio spectrum to follow some sort of music. So I'm going to be using some music I found off of um, my, one of my favorite copyright free uh, YouTube channels on YouTube and that is No Copyright Sounds. They put out a whole bunch of music that is free to use in your videos and you won't have to worry about getting copyright strikes or claims or anything like that. It is free to use, free to uh, put ads on on your videos that you use it with and it's all good and dandy. So anyways, I'm going to grab this music and I'm actually going to double click it and I'm going to start trimming it. Um, for those of you who don't know, you can trim it before putting it in your timeline. I'm going to press the decimal point on my number pad on my keyboard to kind of uh, preview just the sound so I don't have to, uh, you know, RAM preview it out. So I'm going to go about where I think the drop is. I think it's around here and I'm going to press decimal on my keyboard. All right, so the drop's just a little bit after, so I'm going to move my playhead just a little bit forward and try it again. All right, let's move a tad forward. All right, let's try it. Perfect. All right, so we're right at the drop. I'm going to go ahead and click the endpoint selector just right here to select the endpoint. You can also click and drag the beginning and the end to specify it that way. However, I like to do it exactly to where I have my playhead and I click that button to do just that. So anyways, I'm going to grab my music and I'm going to drop it inside my composition and you'll notice if we play it. It actually plays just where we set the endpoint in our trimming panel. So anyways, if you're still in the layer footage or in the footage um, panel up here where you do your trimming, go ahead and click the composition right here to get back to what we're doing here in the comp. 
So anyways, we have our music. So let's go ahead and get started with the actual um, effect. So I'm going to go ahead here and create a new solid. Um, choose whatever solid color you want. It doesn't matter because we'll be changing this later. Um, I'm just going to do white for the example of this tutorial. You can choose whatever color you want. I'm going to toggle off the transparency so it's a little bit easier to see on a black background. And I'm going to kind of drag this in just a little bit. And that looks about good for the middle bar. I'm just going after a look I did in my intro design number three on T-God tutorials or on T-God designs actually. Um, so I'm just going to kind of model after that. I had a bar in the middle. So that's what I'm going to do here. And I'm going to create a new composition that's going to be white. And I'm going to call this spectrum. And we're going to put our audio spectrum effect on here. Keep in mind our bar is still here. It's just being covered up by the new spectrum layer that we created. So anyways, uh, we're going to up here and we're going to search for audio spectrum, the effect. And there it is. We're going to click and drag the audio spectrum effect onto our spectrum layer. And from here, you actually see it um, gets rid of the actual layer and applies the effect to it. And we have these kind of like dots right here. Um, this is these dots will move with the beat of the song. It'll actually show the waveform of the song. Um, so to kind of show that, we're going to go ahead and select our audio layer in the effect so that it can take the waveform from our audio and display it visually. There we go. You see that it's moving with the song. All is good. All is dandy. But you see there's a lot of gaps. It doesn't blend with the bar at all, even if we position it um, like we should at the top of the bar. Right there. You'll see that it still does not really look like it blends in with the bar at all, and that's a big problem. So anyways, in order to do that, let's go ahead and first select only side A. So that way it only goes on the top bit of the bar. It's a good start. Uh, let's go ahead and continue this effect by uh, increasing the number of frequency bands a whole bunch. I'm going to do about, I think, 2,000 or 4,000 is overkill, but 2,000. That should create um, enough bars to kind of fill it. Um, you'll see that there is just a little bit of black in between. And you'll see if we increase the frequency bands, it gets rid of most of it, but not all of it. Let's keep it at 2,000 bands, but let's increase the frequency or uh, not, not the frequency, let's increase the thickness um, to kind of fill that. So there we go, everything's looking good, but you'll notice that um, you know there's a whole lot going on on the left side, or actually um, there's more going on, on the left side, but there's just a lot of individual peaks. It doesn't really look like it fits in. There's, it's just too spiky, too weird. Of course, if this is the look you're going for, then great, but um, it's not really the look that I'm going for. So I'm going to adjust the in and out frequency or the start and end frequency to kind of um, kind of expand and stretch the frequency in and out. I'm going to stretch it in just a little bit, just kind of so it, the each peak gets a little bit bigger. And you'll notice that uh, everything does look a lot bigger and wider here instead of just a lot of little individual narrow peaks. And if we play this back, let's see how it looks. So after I finish RAM previewing by hitting uh, zero on my number pad, I'm going to go ahead and click it again and it'll start to RAM preview. All right, so there we go. That looks really, really good. It blends in perfectly, although they're different colors, but we'll get to that in a second. Um, so now all we want to do is make it symmetrical by applying it to the bottom. So I'm going to click my spectrum layer. I'm going to hit control D on my keyboard or whatever the Mac equivalent is. And that's going to duplicate the effect. And basically what I want to do is grab my rotation tool up here. And with the new uh, spectrum layer selected, I'm going to hold down shift while I drag my mouse around to rotate it. And holding shift is going to snap it to even degrees. So 180 degrees is a complete flip. And that's an even degree, so it'll snap right to the bottom of the bar. And I'm going to let go, grab my selection tool again, and you'll see that when I play this back... Everything looks nice and symmetrical all around the center point. So anyways, the reason why I do that, and instead of actually just flipping it, if I just flipped it like this, right upside down, you'll notice that there's a lot going on on the left side, and maybe it's asymmetrical. It doesn't really look 
balanced. But if I just flip it 180 degrees like that, like I just showed you, um, it actually kind of balances itself out whenever you have tall peaks on, you know, the left side or the right side or whatever's going on, it balances itself out. So anyways, that's all fun and dandy, but how do we make it all the same color? And better yet, how do we apply a texture to it? So in order to do that, what we have to do is that we actually have to pre-comp everything. I'm gonna go ahead and pre-comp even the music, or actually I'm gonna duplicate the music, right? And I'm gonna, because we need the music to be in the same composition as both the spectrums, because the spectrums are using that layer to get their audio source from. So I'm going to duplicate our music for now, and I'm actually going to mute it, but I'm also going to select it and I'm gonna pre-comp it. Keep in mind, I'm keeping my non-muted sound in my main composition so that we can always hear it even though it's not being used in the audio spectrum. So I'm gonna pre-compose it and I'm gonna call this matte because we're gonna use it as a track matte to make it all one color. All right, so there you go. And let's go ahead and toggle off the audio of this just in case. And you'll notice that our audio is going, it looks very nice. And if we play it back. It's the exact same as before, but now is where things are going to get cool. I'm going to create a new solid and you're going to want to make this whatever color you want your final um, sort of blended audio spectrum bar to be. I'm going to make mine a dark gray solid and I'm going to click OK. Now we're going to make a track mat. So basically what a track mat is, so if I toggle on the transparency here, it's going to take wherever there's transparent or in this case, wherever there's checker marks, because checker marks signify transparency, wherever there's checker marks or wherever there's transparency. Um, it's going to take that and it's going to apply that same transparency to whatever layer we're applying the matte to. So if I grab my dark gray solid, remember, always keep the matte you're applying on the top of the layer you want to apply it to. So the matte is my composition right here. I'm putting it on top of my dark gray solid, which is what I want to apply the matte to. So therefore the matte goes on the top. I'm going to press F4 if I don't see any of these modes or blending modes or track map modes. I'm going to press F4 and it's going to kind of toggle between the two different sets of buttons. I'm going to go to this one right here and I'm going to select alpha mat. So I'm going to toggle on my dark gray solid again so we can see it. And we're going to hide our mat and you'll see that all the transparency that there was on the mat, it's now been applied to our solid. So if I take that off again, you'll see it's just a regular solid and now we're applying the transparency of our matte to it. So there we go, it's all one color now. So we have just one single bar that has a blended spectrum on the top and bottom of it. And you'll notice any updates we do, I'm gonna double click my matte here, any updates we do to this composition are going to apply to our matte and therefore it's gonna to apply to our solid. I'm gonna undo that because I didn't want it. Anyways, there we go, that's how you do it on a bar and um, I think it looks really cool. Now, if you want to apply a texture, just find a texture. All right, guys, so my uh, graphics card just crashed. I need to update my drivers or something because it's doing that a lot lately. But anyways, um, After Effects crashed and it won't open again and I didn't save it. So I'm just going to show you kind of visually how you would apply the texture. Um, you basically grab your texture and you import it in After Effects and you do the same thing you did with the new solid. You applied the mat to the solid. Now all you do is create a new mat. You duplicate your mat and put it on top of your texture. And you have both these mat and the texture on top of both the first mat and your solid. And you put your texture and the mat um, above them and then you apply the mat to the texture and then you just toggle or you just turn turn down the transparency of your solid just a little bit so that you can kind of tone uh, tone the texture down if you need and that's how you do the um, the sort of same thing uh, how you apply the texture to your actual moving bar blended audio spectrum. So I'm sorry I couldn't show you that in person, but now I can't open up After Effects and it's actually kind of concerning me. But um, anyways, Nvidia is the best, woo! Um, but yeah, uh, hopefully you guys learned something from this tutorial and let's roll the outro. All right guys, so that's it for this week's Tutorial Tuesday episode. If you enjoyed this episode, please make sure to leave it a like. It really, really, really helps out. And of course, if you're new to this channel, go ahead and click that red subscribe button to be notified when we upload new videos every Tuesday. And um, yeah, your guys' support has been amazing so far, so make sure you guys do keep it up. Go check out my gaming channel and my, my, my intro design channel, I guess you would call it. And um, you know, that's pretty much it. Thank you guys for tuning in, and I'll see you next week for another tutorial. Take it easy, and as always, keep creating.